What computer should you get? And or computers should you get? Uh, this is a big question. It came about people were asking me this question as a follow up to, well, I have my CKA, my certified Kubernetes administrator, and you're telling me I should make a lab, but I don't have money to make a lab. And the question is, what? Where do you get computers? What kind of computers would you recommend for building out your lab at home? So I'm going to tell you. I'm going to share with you the computers that I bought to build up my lab. And why I think that it's not as big an expense as you might think it is, you are going to need a switch of some kind. And I don't want to go through all the things you're going to need here. That's part of the learning process is for you to figure out what stuff you actually need. But if you look at my screen, um, you can see the core piece of this. So, so in order to do any kind of um, lab environment, you need to have more than one computer. And those computers need to be actual computers. They need to be significant. They need to be fast. And they need to have pretty fast um, SSD, solid state drives, in order to simulate things like etcd and these you know, really, really low latency um, things you need at home. Um, these Dell Optiplex are some of the best ones you can get. These are refurbished. And I got these for $150 each. Now, consider for a side, this one was $127. They've gone even down even farther. Considering that these that these computers are, you know, the, the specs on these computers is an, is amazing. Um, in fact, let's look at it. So it's got it's got a quad core i5. You don't need more than this. You're doing simulations of nodes. You don't need a fan don't think about gaming and all that stuff. That's not what you're doing. You're just building out hardware nodes that have other fundamental requirements and what are those requirements they need to be cheap they need to be small so they fit in wherever you're going to put them and that means they don't take a lot of power they need to have uh really solid networking capabilities and they need to be able to pixie boot that means they need to be able to be booted from the network so that you can practice re-imaging things by just rebooting them and having them pull down their their operating system from the network and they need to do what's called network boot um and, and that's it. And so they don't need a lot of disk space. Uh, in fact, the disk space that you're going to be adding is probably going to be coming in another space. So who needs a computer like this and when should you get one? If you are just starting out and this you're watching this video because you're doing the beginner boost and you want to get good and you don't want to, I mean, you, you may have considered saving up your money for a good Mac laptop for your own personal use, but you want a server you can run at home or two or four and you want to be able to run those doing different things and practice networking and and all of the great things that you need to do to be able to become a real good uh, infrastructure engineer then this is this is the way to go these these are the things to get don't people buy raspberry pis and orange pis and things like that to try to replace an actual computer there are good computers and they have some pretty interesting racks where you can put them all in there but they're, in my opinion, they're a bit too small to kind of do this kind of thing. So, you know, 256 SSD is pretty damn good. Uh, 3.1 gigahertz, 16 gigabytes of RAM. You're not getting these machines to be able to carve them up into virtual machines, right? You're getting them so that you can put a whole bunch of them in a stack uh, and, you know, practice your networking and your VLAN setup and, and you know, you're setting up CNI for Kubernetes. That's why you're getting it. Um, if, if you have no other decision to make than what is my first computer that I'm going to buy um, and you're, you, know, you already have a computer you're using to watch this video, uh, probably a Mac or a Windows machine, then I think probably your first purchase should be a computer like this. Somebody might also say, well, Dell sucks. Dell sucks for laptops, but Dell for servers is really good. So um, this is the first kind of computer I suggest that everyone get um, for their server room. And one of the reasons it's nice is because it doesn't have a screen. That means you're going to need to learn how to use a remote screen. You're going to have to learn how to SSH into it. All of the great things that you need. So you're, the first cheapest piece of your lab might be one or two, you know, an Optiplex, an Optiplex like this. And then later, if you want to splurge a little bit more money, you might want to get a tower that you can practice carving up into virtual machines, which is, you know, something you would get later. A lot of people would recommend to you that you get that first because you know you can put whatever you want on there to chop it up into multiple little tiny machines, but the truth of the matter is you still need something to run a Minecraft server on for fun, a running Linux to get your Linux skills good or whatever, and one of these Dell Optiplexes is really great for that. So that's my recommendation. Take that, 
to heart, make your own decisions, and we'll talk to you later.